we are so thankful to God for his restoration and for the unconditional love and care that his wonderful wife, Sister James Zetta, has given to him during this recuperation period of time. Uh, in visiting Bobby several times, I, I asked Miss James Zetta several times, I said, now, he was hard-headed one time. If he gets that way again, call me. I'm gonna hold him while you whoop him. So I, she hadn't called me yet, Bobby, so. Thank God, it seems like you're being obedient. It's good to see all of you here this morning. We are very happy to, that the Lord has allowed us to come once again to be a part of this worship experience. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the right exercise of our minds. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that you have allowed us just to worship you in spirit and in truth. In this season, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the birth of your son, as he came into the world to die for our sins, help us all to embed in our hearts, in our minds, the reason for this season. Because we know it's not about us, but it is about your son. It's about you. Thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that he came to bear our sins on a cross that we might have that right to the tree of life. It's again, O oh Lord, I'm asking, if you please, this your servant, to hide this your servant behind the cross, that those who are here might see thee and not me. Bless, O oh Lord, this message. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, my strength, my redeemer, in the name of Christ, our Lord, we ask it all. Amen. It's good to be here. Uh, hope all of you have had a good week and hope that you will have a wonderful holiday season as to where you rejoice with your family, your friends, and that you embed in your hearts the uh, absolute reason for this season as we celebrate Christ coming into this world. For those of you who have your Bibles with you, I invite you to chapter one of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. And I just wanna to talk to you this morning just briefly from the subject, Emmanuel. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah had predicted and told us that his name would be called Emmanuel. This morning, we will see a dilemma that takes place in the Word of God on the, this particular occasion as to where we celebrate the birth of his son. But we want to understand the reason for this season as we only strive just to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord in this world in which we live. There are those who look at and they believe in the fact or say that they believe that in the gospels um, of what we have as the written word of God, there are only fables that were written by people of old and they don't believe the word of God to be absolutely true. But I believe that the word of God is God breathed into those men who recorded different things according to what, they were, what was revealed to them by a holy God, a God who actually spoke into existence the very essence of the world in which we inhabit a God who said, let there be and there was. I want us to see the dilemmas because of the fact so many times in God's word, it seems like the impossible as to what we see and think to be impossible is possible with God. With God. The Bible teaches me all things are possible. Let's go to the word this morning, and I want you to see the dilemma in which has 
someone facing. Verse 18 of chapter 1 of Matthew reads, Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately or secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary your wife, as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall uh, be with child and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Emmanuel, the son of the living God. One of my favorite writers, authors, he wrote these words, Max Lucado. Gabriel must have scratched his head at this one. He wasn't one to question his God-given missions. When God sent, Gabriel went. And when he got word that God was going to become man, Gabriel was enthused. He could envision the moment and, get, and, and grant something in this. Angels are given the power of choice, knowledge. They think and they react. But they react to the will of the Almighty. He could envision this moment, the Messiah in a blazing chariot, the king descending on a fiery cloud, an explosion of light from which the Messiah would emerge. That's what he had experienced, what he never expected in all the world, however, was what he got, a slip of paper to go to an address in Nazareth, God was to become a baby. It read, tell the mother the name of the child will be Jesus and tell her not to be afraid. Gabriel never once, one time questioned God, but this time he had to wonder about some things. God, he'll become a baby? Gabriel had never seen this before. He had been platoon leader of the bulrush operation. You remember that little Moses guy who he found in the Nile River? That's okay for humans, he thought to himself. But God? The heavens can't contain him. How could the body of a baby contain God. Besides, have you ever seen what comes out of them babies? Hardly befitting for the creator of the universe. Babies must be carried. They must be fed, bounced, bathed. And to imagine some mother burping God on her shoulder. Why? That was beyond even what an angel could even imagine or comprehend. Go outside the box with me. Not only is this a dilemma for Gabriel, 
But if when we read in the passage this morning, there's a man who's engaged to a young lady. He's fallen in love. He's already asked for her hand in marriage. She is so in love with this guy down the street named Joseph. Some people might have even called him Joe. And Joe has prepared himself, asked for her hand in marriage. And not only that, Joe's getting things ready. See, there, there, there's something about the passage, and Joe understands what the conditions are to marry this young lady. See, it says over back over there in the book of Genesis, for this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Life together was built in the home of their own. It might have been in the same community. It could have been just down the block. But Joseph had a responsibility. And that, jo that responsibility that Joe had was to build a home and get everything ready. It was his responsibility to get all the furnishings in. It was his responsibility to get all the dishes in the cupboard. It was his responsibility to get the sleeping quarters ready. It was his responsibility to have that home where he went to get his bride, when he went to get her, that all she had to do was step in the door and take care of things in the home. Guys, I hope y'all getting this, and especially all you young guys who are not married yet. I hope y'all getting the pictures. There's a responsibility. Joe was living up to his responsibility as a man. Joe was going to provide for this woman by the name of Mary, who he was going to ask to marry him. But in the process of what's going on, in the process, of getting things ready, all of a sudden there's a rumor flowing around in the community. Mary's pregnant. She gonna have a child. Baby, y'all know Mary been tipping and Joe don't know nothing about it. Human nature hadn't changed. He gonna, she said what? Holy Spirit, mm. who, mm, Holy Spirit, mm, 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 baby, ain't never happened before, and she talking about Holy Spirit. An angel visited her. This is what's going on in the community. I guarantee you it is because I said, as I've stated before, human nature, it hadn't changed. People are speculating. There is doubt in Joseph's mind even at this time. But Joseph is a just man. Joseph is a guy who don't want to publicly expose this woman who he loves so dearly. See, the law stated even that she could have been stoned to death if it wasn't none of his child and he knew it and she was pregnant out of wedlock. But not only her, but the guy who did it. But they can't find out who the guy is that did this. Not knowing that the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, God Almighty has chosen for himself a handmaiden to enter into this world through that mankind might be redeemed from his sins. And all of the rumors and all of the confusion is taking place in that community, that small little community of Nazareth. And Joseph don't know what to do. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for, for, for the angel Gabriel. He gets the message. He may have questioned. He may have even wondered 
what would take place in this situation. But now with the orders, he goes down and he tells Mary. And not only does he have to tell Mary in a dream by night, it is revealed to him, Joseph, don't, don't, don't worry about this thing. Don't, don't put her away. Don't, don't ostracize her in your community. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. And she's going to bear a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. But the Old Testament prophets have already told you that this, one, this was going to come about. And now all of a sudden, Joseph is arrayed, uh, he raises up out of the dream. And the Bible says that he takes her as his wife, but he does not know her. He does not have a relationship with her until Jesus is in the house. I think marriage ought to be that way as to where when you come together, Jesus ought to be in the house. Jesus should be in the house. But his name shall be called Emmanuel also because he will save his people from their sins. Well, let's investigate just a little bit and we'll go home here, okay? We'll go to Sunday school rather. We'll go there. But let's investigate just for a moment the name Emmanuel Emmanuel, he will save his people from their sin. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, the one who calmed the sea. Emmanuel, his name was Emmanuel because he was God with us. He's the Emmanuel of our times because he makes the blind to see. He's Emmanuel in that day and time because he called those who were dead back to life. He's Emmanuel because he stilled the storm on the sea. He's Emmanuel because of the fact he is God with us. And even before he left this earth, he had an agenda in mind where he told his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. I will pray the Father. He will send you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, and he will guide you. And he is with us today in our endeavor, in our stand. He is with us. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that we are his own. He's Emmanuel, God with us, to comfort us in our times of grief, to comfort us through the storms of this life. He is there with us in our trials, in our tribulations, to help us to accomplish and come through safely to the other side. His name shall be called Emmanuel. He is God with us. Who is he to you today? Have you made that decision in your life? Do you believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who will diligently seek him? His word is true, and it's in him that we live, that we move, that we have our very being. He is God with us. Have you claimed him as your Savior today? Do you know him? and the power that he gives to each of us to walk by faith and not by sight. This morning, a good way to end up this year would be to come to know him and have a personal relationship with him. If you're here, you're without a church home. If you're here, you've never professed Christ. We will accept you into our church family by letter, by Christian experience, by candidate for baptism. There will be deacons here at the front, as well as in the back of the church and in the balcony, as you come to know this Emmanuel, God with us.
May we stand as the invitation is extended. Step out by faith, knowing he will be with you through every situation that life might throw your way. Won't you come this morning?